The Epiphany of Saint Maurice Saint Maurice was, according to tradition, the leader of the legendary Roman Theban Legion in the 3rd century, and one of the favorite and most widely venerated saints of that group. He was the patron saint of several professions, locales, and kingdoms. He is also a highly revered saint in the Coptic Orthodox Church of Alexandria and other churches of Oriental Orthodox. According to the hagiographical material, Maurice was an Egyptian, born in 250 AD, also known as Luxor. Maurice became a soldier in the Roman army. He was gradually promoted until he became the leader of the Theban Legion, formed of 6,600 soldiers. He was an acknowledged Christian at a time when early Christianity was considered to be a threat to the Roman Empire. Yet he moved easily within the pagan society of his day. The Legion, entirely composed of Christians, had been called from Thebes in Egypt to Gaul to assist Emperor Maximian to defeat a revolt by the Bagudae. The Theban Legion was dispatched with orders to clear the Great St. Bernard Pass across Mont Blanc. Before going into battle, they were instructed to offer sacrifices to the pagan gods and pay homage to the Emperor. Maurice pledged his men's military allegiance to Rome. He stated that service to God superseded all else. To engage in wanton slaughter was inconceivable to Christian soldiers, he said. He and his men refused to worship the Roman deities. However, when Maximian ordered them to harass some local Christians, they refused. Ordering the unit to be punished, Maximian had every tenth soldier killed, a military punishment known as decimation. More orders followed. The men refused, as encouraged by Maurice, and a second decimation was ordered. In response to the Theban Christians' refusal to attack fellow Christians, Maximian ordered all the remaining members of the 6,600 unit to be executed. The place in Switzerland where this occurred, known as Agonum, is now St. Maurice, Switzerland, site of the Abbey of St. Maurice. So reads the earliest account of their martyrdom, contained in the public letter which Bishop Eucarius of Lyon addressed to his fellow bishop. Alternative versions have the legion refusing Maximian's orders only after discovering a town they had just destroyed had been inhabited by innocent Christians, or that the emperor had them executed when they refused to sacrifice to the Roman gods. In 961, Holy Roman Emperor Otto I was building and enriching Magdeburg Cathedral which he intended for his own tomb. To that end, in the year 961 of the Incarnation, and in the 25th year of his reign, in the presence of all of the nobility, on the Vigil of Christmas, the body of St. Maurice was conveyed to him at Regensburg along with the bodies of some of the saints' companions and portions of other saints. Having been sent to Magdeburg, 
These relics were received with great honor by a gathering of the entire populace of the city and of their fellow countrymen. They are still venerated there to the salvation of the homeland. Maurice is traditionally depicted in full armor in Italy emblazoned with a red cross. In folk culture, he has become connected with the legend of the Holy Lands, which he is supposed to have carried into battle. His name is engraved on the Holy Lands of Vienna, one of several relics claimed as the spear that pierced Jesus' side on the cross. Because of his name and native land, Saint Maurice had been portrayed as black ever since the 12th century. The oldest surviving image that depicts Saint Maurice as a black African in knight's armor was sculpted in mid 13th century for Magdeburg Cathedral. There it is displayed next to the grave of the Holy Roman Emperor Otto I. When the new cathedral was built under Archbishop Albert II of Kaffenburg, a relic said to be the head of Maurice was procured from the Holy Land. The image of Saint Maurice has been examined in detail and demonstrated that this image of Maurice has existed since Maurice's first depiction in Germany between the Wesser and the Elbe and spread to Bohemia where it became associated with the imperial ambitions of the House of Luxembourg. Images of the saint died out in the mid-16th century, undermined, some suggest, by the developing Atlantic slave trade. Once again, as in the early Middle Ages, the color black had become associated with spiritual darkness and, and cultural otherness.